was, it was last orders for Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer during a campaign walkabout in Bath City Centre yesterday after this moment when landlord Rod Humphreys booted him out of his pub. And so he did. And landlord Rod Humphreys <laughs> joins us now. We have in the studio, of course, the males Andrew Pearce and the mirrors mm -hmm. Kevin Maguire and also Dr Hillary, because I think Dr Hillary's going to be interested in what you say, uh, Mr Humphreys. Um, did, firstly, did you know that the Labour leader was planning to drop in? Not really. I, I did know that some Labour Party person was coming and I sort of assumed it was some local uh, councillor or something wanting to talk about something. I thought um, they said it was something that I, had been agreed by um, one of your business partners. Yes, clearly that was the case, but I'd failed to attend to the detail, um, as I sometimes do. And then there was Keir Starmer on the street, so I gave him a piece of my mind. OK, now, what is your issue as a Labour voter... Uh, with so, your leader. Right. Um, uh, yes, he, in my opinion, so the, the way we've handled this pandemic, this virus, has overwhelmingly uh, impacted on the old, the young, the vulnerable and the poor. And if there's anybody who should be standing up for them, it should be him. And he's utterly failed to do it. OK, can he's I just... Sorry, I just can I just interrupt you? Can I just interrupt you? Because... Sure. Because there's two issues here, aren't there? The one is what hmm. you say, which is very important. The yeah. other is, why did it get... Sorry, I just... I think people will be distracted by the fact it got so physical. Oh, so uh, I, I'm not sure why. He walked into the pub and I wasn't happy about that, so I went after him to uh, ask him to leave or tell him to leave, and his security guards grabbed me and that's why it got physical. OK, so but, presumably, uh, you know, hmm. the security guards are there to protect a very high-profile, high-risk yeah. uh, politician. So, um, mm. so you're I saying... There's no physical threat to him, but I don't think that matters. OK, so then you got moved out of the way so that he could uh, leave the pub. All right, so we've established so. what happens yeah. in terms of the pictures. Mm. Um, carry on with your issue with him. So there are a lot of things uh, which are simple facts which need to be discussed. For example, as I put to him on the street, the average age of death with COVID is 82 years and three months. The average age of death is 81 years. That means basically that old people die. When we get old, we die. That's fundamentally what's been happening. Uh, the last time as a proportion this many people died in this country was 2008. Now, uh, and every, every preceding year, more people had died going back to the Second World War. Uh, so uh, I don't remember us doing this, this all this stuff in 2008. So your you, issue I, is that you're anti-lockdown, you um, don't agree with the restrictions, and you think Sir Keir Starmer hasn't stood up for people like hasn't. you. Why is he not talking about Florida? Why is he not talking about Texas, Sweden, Tanzania, Belarus, all the places in the world where they simply haven't done this and lots of people haven't died. Right. Well, if he should be in Parliament asking those questions that, that, that's or, that, uh, on, on behalf of us. That, that's, that's not strictly true. I mean, Sweden did... They have had their versions of restrictions. Mm -hmm. Almost every country in all these states you mentioned, they have had some restrictions. It's an absolute lie that they haven't. But, look, I mean, surely, you under, surely you understand... A one fundamental point, you understand the point that... We have we had this new virus over the last 18 months, and the main reasons for lockdown and all these precautions we was to protect mm. the hospitals and the NHS. If we didn't have lockdown, these hospitals would have been overrun. More people would have died. Surely you understand we, that. You said you said at the start of this interview that you don't tend to look at detail. Uh, you know, I think you need to tend to look at a bit more detail here when it would, comes to the pandemic. You Surely like you understand to... that. What would um, actually the the evidence? is against you. If you care to talk to uh, Governor Ron DeSantis of, of California, uh, sorry, uh, Florida, uh, there are lots of bits of the world which have actually managed to cope with, and I, I'm not denying that it was very serious. Um, uh, lots of bits of the world have actually put resources into their hospitals and kept their economy open, and they've not had any more deaths than us. I don't know why, but clearly all this social distancing and stuff doesn't work. There have been lots and lots and lots of studies pointing this out. 
why is no one standing up and talking about this? OK, well, I'll tell you someone who... You might not be standing up and talking about it, but Dr Hillary is certainly sitting yeah. down mm. and look, look, uh, quite greatest, aerated about it. With the greatest respect, Rod, I think you should stick to pulling pints rather than <laughs> advising the government about uh, policy on, uh, on the biggest pandemic public health issue for the last 100 years. Look at the fact... In India right now, 270,000 mm. people, uh, people a day are coming down with COVID-19. Brazil, 852 children under the age of nine have died from COVID in the last uh, six weeks uh, and 518 of them were under one years old. Babies are dying of COVID. Now, if we ignore a pandemic, if we say lockdown doesn't work, how do you think this spreads in the first place? It's person-to-person -person mm -hmm. contact. And if, all, if you look at all the countries that locked down earlier and had more sustained mm. lockdown, they've had better health outcomes and better economies. You know, it's very simple. Look at every peak that I... we've had. What happened when we had a peak of 1,200 deaths a day? We went into lockdown and the numbers came down. It's very simple. As... You have to have I... lockdown in a pandemic that mm. kills people. And if you're saying that 83, at 83 it doesn't matter if you die, you're saying that people like Prince Philip, in the last 16 years of his life were meaningless and worthless. We can't allow so, that to happen. You can't be that ageist. Right. I, I, so, firstly, as uh, even, I think, Chris Whitty or, or, or Mr Valance have, have acknowledged, uh, when we've gone into lockdown, the infections, the deaths, have, well, certainly the infections have already been falling. So, actually, uh, there is no established causal link, and this has been researched all over the world, the causal link between lockdowns and lack of deaths and serious hospitalizations well, is just not there. Would you like this to tell me how it happens then? How numbers come down? It's not vaccination because it hasn't had time to uh, have an effect yet, but it will reduce hospitalizations and deaths. But how do you think we got out of the first two peaks? Oh, I, I think that uh, after you've had it, you're immune. And it's a seasonal virus that clearly is very dangerous. A seasonal to virus population. that's been going on all year. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you look at the data around the world, so we, we had it when it arrived in March and then we had another surge of it in winter and I'm sure we're going to have it again this winter and I strongly suspect people will start PCR and lateral okay. flow testing in autumn and close us down again okay. if they can. I mean, Rod, you know, it, it's, uh, I know you represent... The, there is a significant number of people who, who may agree with you, um, but mm. 150,000 deaths, you know, is the toll. And, and rising, unfortunately, because of coronavirus so we, in this country. Can we have so, that in perspective? Uh, can we have that in perspective? I, I, I think for every deaths? single one of those families uh, who has lost someone to COVID, uh, we don't need your perspective particularly so on that. That's a tragedy that, for every single person. But, Rod, it's, a, it, it's, I think what you've done is you've, you've raised some really interesting points, and I, I'd like to talk to Andrew and Kevin about them. Because what Rod's, you know, he, this is one of those very significant moments in political campaigning, isn't it? Where he's basically bringing up an issue. The, we know the majority of people, actually, if you poll them, are in favour of yeah. the restrictions and have been in favour of lockdown. But there are people, yeah. like Rod, obviously, and particularly in the hospitality industry, who feel like they've been disproportionately affected by something which they think has been taken uh, and exaggerated. Um, but it's a very interesting point that he put to Sir Keir Starmer. Where was your opposition on this? And that's, that has been a tricky one for the Labour leader. Yeah, and if you look at the polls, the Labour leader is miles behind Boris Johnson as who would make the best Prime Minister. The Labour Party is miles behind the Tory party. And, and, but when you consider we've got one of the highest death tolls in Europe, not the highest anymore, but one of the highest, you couldn't say this, this has been the government's finest hour, could you? And yet Labour have been nowhere to be seen. However, Rod is wrong. We had to go into lockdown. I hate going into lockdown. I, I, I have some sympathy for the Prime Minister in not taking us into lockdown as quickly, perhaps, as he should have done, because I think he was trying to protect the economy. But Well, there's an argument. If we'd gone into lockdown earlier, yeah, lives, exactly. of course, would have been yeah, saved. You could argue that. Particularly later in the year last year, yeah, yeah. if we'd gone into lockdown yeah, um, yeah, earlier, yeah. We, we would have saved lives. Yeah. But, but people compare the pandemic, Kevin, to a war. Mm. Um, and it was a war on COVID. Mm. And in those circumstances, the opposition leader is in a very tricky situation because you almost want a government of national unity. Yeah. Well, you want the government to win. 
That's what you want. You want the government to succeed in a pandemic just as you would in a... In, certainly in the World War, uh, World War II. But, look, Rod's a, Rod's a covid idiot. And his co-owner of the pub has distanced himself yeah. from what he is saying. All the evidence is lockdowns work. Of course. Uh, right? It's just absolutely clear. Keir Starmer, as an opposition leader, because he knew lockdowns work, his opposition was focusing on the government not providing PPE for health service workers. It was uh, criticising the discharging of the elderly from hospitals and into remember, care homes. And remember, is married effective. to an NHS yeah. yep. um, worker. He, he knows all. He, know, he knows pretty much all about it. Uh, does uh, Keir Starmer? Yeah. His opposition was also that Boris Johnson in the summer, going into the autumn, was too slow to follow the scientific advice and reimpose the lockdown, which is why more than half the people who died died from the autumn on. And a lot of that was avoidable. I have huge sympathy with a publican who has been locked down and yeah, feels right. his business has been... Uh, Stuffed. ..going, going, yeah, going yeah. Down, the, uh, down the pan and probably didn't get enough support. I, I, I accept that, uh, and I think it's legitimate criticism. But just coming up with a load of conspiracy theories, he's probably but, read bits on but, the web here and there and cherry-picking yeah. and, and ignoring the overall uh, evidence is... Look, it's crazy. And if, if a drinker, I think, behaved the way he was, shouting and ranting like that, if a drinker was like that mm. in his pub, he wouldn't be... Put a, yeah, put, yeah, but why didn't Keir Starmer... Team, check that pub out first. Check that the publican <laughs> was going to make him welcome. Yeah. Pour him a nice pint well, and have I a chat. I, I, give I him think a bag of crisps. Was, I think Keir was speaking to Rod outside yeah. the pub. Didn't realise it was his pub. So uh, tried to walk away from him, and then walks into the pub. Uh, I'll yeah. get away from him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go and have a pint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trying to get away from the village.